On Friday, I saw that Designburger, Vizoon, and Tom Dixon Studio are hosting a competition. The prompt is to reimagine a Tom Dixon lamp. I decided to have a go and share the entire process with you. So here's how I reimagined a Tom Dixon lamp to create Aurelia Hexalux. I chose to reimagine Tom Dixon's Melt portable LED lamp. However, I didn't want to stray too far from the original concept, especially since I was only giving myself a few hours to complete this project. To get started, head on over to vizune.io and follow the steps they've laid out and download the project files. You'll get some 3D models from Tom Dixon Studio, as well as a couple of really nice Keyshot material packs and a couple of studios as well. These will help get you going and provide you with a much nicer environment than I ended up with. I started with a cubic form and thought about structure that connected the four corners of the cube. Then I applied the same concept to a triangular prism. I then considered how glass form would look on top of the structure. On the third attempt, I refined the proportions of the lamp base and had the idea of the glass looking like it was draped over the base in a molten form. I liked the contrast of the structured rigid base and the soft organic form of the glass. During the sketch model phase, the goal is to create a rough model as quickly as possible and not worry too much about detail, just like when sketching early concepts. I've been using Fusion 360 since about 2016. What I like about parametric CAD modeling tools is that they make it very easy to update and change your design after you finish the model. This is one reason they're so popular in product design. Later on, you'll see I didn't like the proportions of the lamp base and it was easy to make necessary updates. In order to make the base more interesting, I chose to rotate the top 60 degrees, which wasn't in my original sketch concept, but I like giving myself the freedom to make design decisions on the fly at this stage. For the glass portion of the lamp, I entered the form workspace of Fusion 360. This lets me push and pull parts of the geometric shape to sculpt the look that I want. I started with a sphere because the face edges would align with the arms of the lamp base. This would also make it easier to sculpt the form. I wanted the glass to look like it was slumped over the lamp base, so once I was happy with the form, I cut a hole in the bottom of it and added thickness. For the cord, I like to use a simple spline. I use the move tool to position it as needed and then get the pipe command to give it some thickness. Adding a well-positioned cable helps bring any hard body CAD design to life. Now at this point, I was concerned that my lamp actually wouldn't be big enough to fit a standard sized light bulb. So I quickly modeled up an E12 light bulb from Ikea I made some adjustments to the bulb fixture just to be sure that this lamp wouldn't be too small. I didn't like how much of the light bulb I could see at this point, so I added a parabolic cone-shaped collar around the base of the bulb. This is another instance where the design changed in CAD because I didn't realize how tall a light bulb would be when sketched out in the design. So finally, I added a lip for the glass lamp shade to rest on. And the last step is to apply materials for each different part. This makes it faster for me to assign materials in Keyshot. For sketch rendering, I want to quickly throw some materials and lighting onto the design to see if it even looks good at all. Sometimes at this stage, a design just doesn't look right. So just as I did during the sketch modeling phase, I'm trying to be quick. I'm considering how the light moves across the surface, how the silhouettes look, and in case of transparent materials, how light actually transmits through them. I'm also looking for combinations of colors or finishes that complement each other and reinforce the design narrative. By adding a horizontal texture to the light fixture, I'm also thinking about finishing and machining processes, pulling from my mental library of finishes that seem appropriate for this product. For the cable, I used real cloth material from Keyshot's library and scaled it down and made it look black. Then I applied a solid glass material to the lampshade. At this point, I explored a textured organic material for the base, almost like a cast iron look. My thought was that it would make the clean geometric look of the base more neutral or natural and organic looking, and then it would also match the organic nature of the glass bubble. But eventually I decided it just wasn't working. Instead, I embraced the contrast and chose to go with a high polish gold material for the base. To get the glass shade to look right, I duplicated the form and then separated the inner surface using the split surfaces tool in Keyshot. And then I scaled the form down to 0.99%. This gave me a surface to use as a reflector inside the glass shade, simulated a coated glass material. I then used the ray mask node to set the metal surface to 70% opacity. At this point, I noticed Keyshot was terribly slow due to the opacity I applied to the metal surface. I tried GPU mode and then Keyshot sped right back up and I was back in business. So unfortunately, this hack would not have worked. It had just been too slow if I relied on CPU rendering for this project. I also noticed the refractions looking a little too jagged, and this is due to tessellation. If I were in CPU mode, I could render this in NURBS, 
but in GPU mode, that's a no-go. So I retestulated the glass and metal parts of the shade to see if it would help smooth things out, and it did. I wanna pause here for a second. If you're a designer looking to improve your craft, then this next step is critical. This is when I do a self-critique. I look at the result of my first draft and decide what needs to change. By objectively critiquing your work, you'll develop better taste and hold yourself to higher standards. Then you go back and make those changes. So for me, I decided that the legs of the lamp base looked too thick, the middle of the base looked a little too thin, and the cord wasn't lying on the table correctly. Also, the glass shade needed to be massaged a bit more so it wasn't overlapping with the lamp base. I also wanted it to be a bit more droopy, if that makes sense. So I hopped back into Fusion 360 and reworked the proportions of the lamp base. Similar to how a tree's limbs and roots are thinner the further the way they are from the trunk, I wanted to follow the same natural logic. The result was a little bit more elegant. Next, I made some slight edits to the glass shade form so it fit the base better and felt a bit more organic and pulled down by gravity and less like an inflated bubble. I also duplicated the inner surface so I wouldn't have to do that part in key shot. And finally, I fixed the cable so it lay flat on the floor. Now, back into KeyShot for the final rendering, I stuck with the same CMF I did during the sketch render phase, but I spent a bit more time refining the materials. For example, the cable got a diagonal pattern rather than just a straight linear one. Instead of a bump texture on the light fixture, I opted for displacement, which gave me a better swirly reflection inside the lampshade. I also chose to use a multi-layer optic material on the outside of the lampshade, which gave me a chance to bring a little more color into the glass. Once my materials were set up, I established my primary camera angle and set up a plane for a backdrop and used a spotlight to create a nice warm glow behind the lamp. I also used a blue area light to bring in some cool light from the left of the frame. Throughout this process, I kept tweaking the glass and metal part of the lampshade to try to strike a balance of transparency, refraction, and reflection. And of course, I added some smudgy fingerprints to the gold metal of the base just for some slight imperfections. And before rendering, I made sure to retestulate the gold base and glass metal shades very high to try and get a smooth reflection and avoid jagged tessellated reflections. After establishing a couple more camera angles, I duplicated my model set to create a clay rendering for each shot. I set my resolution a bit above 4K, set my samples to a whopping 10,000, and chose multi-layer EXR as my image format and added them all to the render queue. Once the renderings were done, I brought them into Photoshop for some light post-processing. First, I applied a curves adjustment layer to add a bit of contrast and push the values around. Next, I added a grain layer, which is done with a 50% gray followed by noise and Gaussian blur, then finished by setting the blend mode to overlay and opacity at 50%. After merging those layers, I did some lens correction to add a tiny bit of barrel distortion, chromatic aberration, and vignette. I kept all this very subtle, but the goal is to make it feel a little bit more like a photograph. Lastly, I used the color balance to bring some blues into the shadows and a bit more warmth into the highlights. I also used some curves to bring a bit more contrast and brightness into the clay renderings, then exported every image as a full resolution JPEG. Now all I have to do is submit my rendering on Design Burger. This entire process took me about 3 hours and 23 minutes and is a pretty typical process for me. I like to keep things fast and loose in the beginning, then do a self critique after round one, revise, and then do a round two. Big shout out to Design Burger, Vizune, and Tom Dixon Studio for hosting this cool contest. I hope you enjoyed watching me create a submission, and I hope to have inspired you to submit your own design, even if you don't have a lot of time. The deadline is December 4th, 2023. Good luck, and I can't wait to see what you create.